Hey guys, how are you doing? Good morning. It is Wednesday. It's why is it always hump day? I feel like every time I do like a live or a video, I'm always like, whoa, it's hump day. Yeah, people will think I am obsessed um, with humps in the camel sense, obviously. Oh my gosh, it's too early. I need to drink my coffee. Um, how are you guys doing? I hope you're all um, marvelously well. I hope you're all having an excellent, actually it's almost Wednesday lunchtime, um, but in Catherine time, lunchtime is kind of close to early morning. So how is everybody doing? I'm giving you all time to sort of just um, roll in. I know Facebook takes uh, a minute or two to start giving notifications in the group and popping it up for everyone. Um, but if you're watching, post a little comment so I can see you and say hi. Um, I know we've had a lot of new people in the group. We're getting like 20 people a day joining the group at the moment, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so if I owe you a message or um, you've sent anything to me, please poke me because I, I never ignore anyone. I just get a little bit overwhelmed sometimes because um, that's life. Uh, hey, everyone. Oh, wow. I freaked Jeff out. He was watching my video. Um, <laughs> Kathy, hi. Welcome. I know you just joined the group. Um, I hope you are enjoying it very much. Um, Jennifer, well, hi. Rick. Yay, it's Rick. I hope you are very, very well, Rick. Um, are you in Florida yet, Rick, or is, is, is that going to be a while? Um, cause California will miss you. Um, Jen, how are you? <laughs> Jesus, Catherine, you are a legend. I, I don't feel very legendary at the moment, but thank you, Jen. I, hugs, um, wow. You, yeah, I, I, yeah, I try not to do the flappy arm thing. That's the problem. You, do, you only do the, like the screen hugs. There's, there's two ways to do screen hugs successfully. If you have like old lady arms. Um, the first is you do like little pterodactyl hugs like that. Um, and, but that can be creepy as well. Um, or the other is that you wear long sleeves. So, <laughs> hi Liliana, I hope you are doing very well. Oh, Rick's still here for, for one month. Okay, oh, and Tina is in the house, yay, Tina. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about two things to, well, actually, it, it's sort of two things that really um, connect with each other. Actually, before I do that, sorry, I'm all over the place. As I say, I'm kind of giving people time to join us. Um, I wanted to just do a quick compare. A lot of people keep asking about um, gloss versus matte. And um, I thought I might as well just show some books. So it, it might show a little bit better in video than it does in um, still pictures. These are the two NASA um, books that I've been talking about a little bit in the group. They're made with public domain NASA art. I didn't really make them to sell. So if you find them, they're not very keyworded up because um, I kind of made them more for my kids and for myself. Um, but they're really cool little NASA notebooks. Um, this one, ha they're both in the matte cover. This one has the cream paper. And I just want to show you, I'm really kind of falling for the cream paper. It's a little bit thicker than the white, um, but I really like it. I think it looks kind of elegant for adult um, books. And then this is hex paper on the white. And that looks pretty cool too. So that's a matte book. And then this is a glossy book. So you can see, um, I don't notice any problem with fingerprints, actually, when it's patterned like this. I know people say fingerprints, and I do have a black matte book that picks up the fingerprints really badly. When it's patterned, I don't see any fingerprints. I, it, they don't seem to show up. Or maybe they've improved it a bit. I don't know, but it, it doesn't seem very fingerprinty. Um, this is a glossy book. Also, no issues with the fingerprints on there. Um, it's a bit grubby, but that's just because I've taken it to a lot of places. Um, but there we go, there's a couple of books while we were sort of waiting. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about today, um, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to talk about what makes a book saleable, like what makes it attractive enough and persuasive enough that people actually want to buy it. Um, and then I wanted to just brainstorm some niches, which I thought would be fun. Um, so my answer to what makes a book saleable and what I've noticed is that I find that if your book has a particular function, it can um, sell quicker than a book that is more abstract. So what my suggestion is for today is tell people what to do with your journal. Like don't just make a book that says yoga journal, for example. Whoa, I, you know, my, my computer's on a tilt. So when I do that, it, it's, it's hard to align. <laughs> Um, don't just make a book that says yoga journal. Um, what you should do with a book like that 
is actually tell people what they should write in there. And I've been doing a bit of sort of research, thinking, looking around bookstores. And I noticed, for example, like Moleskine have all these um, planners that have very specific um, kind of what you're supposed to do with those planners. So if you're in tangent templates, the sermon paper and the um, spell paper are kind of good examples of this. They actually tell people what to do with the book. So they have, for example, the sermon paper, I think it has like Bible verse, your thoughts on the Bible verse, sort of further thoughts, like actually giving people an idea of what to do. And the problem is most people aren't very, they, like they don't want to use their brain or they're, they're busy. They're, they're walking around the bookstore, they're browsing Amazon. And if they just see a book that has a picture of a girl doing yoga on, they'll go, oh, okay, that's fine. It's a yoga book. They might buy it because they might have an idea of what to do with it. They might be specifically looking for something. But if you say to them, in, even in the description, so I, I know I mentioned the moleskin and I said those actually are very specific in the interiors. They actually tell you exactly how to use it in the interiors. I think that is super awesome. But if you're using a plain template, you can actually just explain it in the description of your listing. And you can say, well, this is a yoga book. It's for people who are going to yoga classes um, to write down the time and date of your classes, to put a list of your contacts, your yoga contacts, because all the like moms who do yoga meet all their yoga friends there, right? So they could have a page to put the contacts in there. Um, you could also say, log the exercises you're having trouble with, or put a list of the exercises you've learned in there. The key is to tell people how to use the journal. And I know a lot of us are like, oh, well, I, I just want to get it up there as quick as possible. I'm just going to throw it out there and see what people use it for. I notice I get more sales when I give people ideas and I say, you can use this book to log your friends at yoga, to log your exercises at yoga. Why not make um, a list of what you want to practice at home? Why not keep a note of any other teachers that are mentioned in the, like all of those things you could totally log. And I th I've noticed this is really true for anything. I know I was talking, actually, I was talking to Laurie um, a couple of days ago and I shared uh, a notebook that I'd made and I think I posted it in a thread in, in the group as well. Um, and it was just simply a wide rule notebook with like an Arabic picture on the front. And I said, you can use this notebook for learning Arabic. Like it's basically, it's a plain, completely plain wide rule notebook. But I did some research and it said wide rule notebooks is perfectly fine for sort of Arabic writing. Um, so I, I said, well, use this notebook for practicing Arabic for schools, for high schools, for kids, for adults who are learning. Um, and you can use like, I, I don't know, diplomacy, like you can, you can find any um, prayers, like whatever kind of words you want to put in that. Um, ah, yeah, Shelley's giving great ideas. She says yoga studio, you could rate the class, rate the instructors. Yeah. And I mean, the best thing to do, honestly, the best thing to do is to have a book that is specifically about yoga class and you give them pretty much um, a, a format where they can put the exercises. It has contacts in the back and so on. If you don't want to do that, if you're not using InDesign and you don't want to go that far, you can kind of get the same effect by just using a blank journal and explaining what to use it for. So I think that's what I'm saying here is like the, the ideal is to design your notebook completely with all the prompts in, um, to, to put all that in there and, and to have a specific framework in the book. But if you don't want to go that far, you can kind of get the same effect with marketing, with just putting it in your listing, explaining in your listing. Or if you want to go even a step further than that, and I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a believer in brand building. Like I, I really believe that it's better to make one book and spend half an hour marketing it than it is to make sort of like six books and just rush them out. Um, I, I think it's a really good idea to do a little bit of marketing. So what you could do is actually make a YouTube video for your yoga book. Like it only has to be literally two minutes um, and you could explain what to do with it and say, this is my yoga book. I like to use it to write a description of the instructor, to keep a note of which exercises I'm struggling with, um, to keep a list of my friends. Like you can totally do that. Oh, no. Yeah. So the, basically the gist of what we were saying is that it's a really good idea to, if you can, 
create custom interiors, give people prompts. And I know, I think Jen um, mentioned the 365 project. If you haven't watched it, actually, do go and enjoy the 365 project. It's a free class that I put together all about making prompt books. And this is actually something we're looking at doing a bit more, maybe with the tangent templates as well. So um, think about putting prompts in your book. Think about putting formats, frames. If you were in my magic formulas class, guys, if you were in my magic formulas class, go back and revisit that. Because in magic formulas, um, and if you have access to tangent as well, use the formulizer. Because, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's 365.catherine. Oh, it's 365project.catherine.com, I think. If that doesn't work, it's .blueskysuite.com. But I think it's catherine.com. Um, or it might be, th actually, I think it's just 365. Sorry. It's 365.catherine.com. Let's see if that works. Um, yeah, it is. Okay, that popped up. It's 365.catherine.com. Um, sorry, I have so many URLs. I'm, I'm having a... We're, we're actually looking at centralizing and sort of if there's a better way to do that. Um, oh, yeah. So Laurie said I was talking about doing one book. So the, the people... I, I know everyone has different approaches to putting their books on Create Space. And a lot of people are doing the sort of merch approach which is just get as many um, books up there as quickly as you can and capture as many keywords as you can. And that approach works fine. I mean, I, I know there are some people who are doing very, very well with that. I know I talked to Kelly and she, she's doing well with that approach. And a lot of people are, um, are just putting up books as quickly as possible to capture keywords. Um, nothing wrong with that, especially if you're making money. Um, me, I prefer... Honestly, I don't have the patience to just keep uploading and, and keep doing that. So I would rather make sort of a couple of books uh, and then do a little bit of marketing with them um, and promote those. And the cool thing is if you do marketing with them, you can put function into your book. So what we were talking about just before Facebook kind of died on me, um, I said the key to making your book saleable, attractive, is to tell people what to do with it. Like it's as simple as that. Tell people how to use your book. And the more detail you can give them on what they should be doing with your book, the, the more sales you're likely to see. And the reason I can say this is because if you look at things like um, password trackers, like there was a big craze about a year ago for just books where people could write down their passwords. And I think the reason it's sold is because it's such a simple idea. It's like, this is all you got to do. Just put your, um, put your passwords in this book. And people, especially older people, were like, wow, that's great. That's what, that's what I need. And here's the dumb thing, right? This is where it comes down to marketing. You can write your password in any book. You can buy a 20 cent notebook from CVS and write down your passwords in there. But no, people want to buy a book that says, this is a book for writing your passwords in. Like, that's how people are. That's like, this is kind of what we do is just, what do people, what are people going to use this book for? Tell them the function. Um, Jennifer says her parents have one of those. Um, Lalana says, what kind of marketing? Oh, hey, I want to give out a big shout out to Lalana. Um, she just posted a video on uh, making covers with Photoshop. And um, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet because I was doing this. But Isaac, um, he's just gone out to the movies with my daughter. And he said on the way out, he said um, that he watched it and it was awesome, Lalana. He said, I've got to watch it. It's a really, really good video. And he was really happy you posted it. So I just wanted to pass that on to you. I haven't watched it yet, so, but I'm sure it's amazing. Um, but I wanted to say that Isaac told me to watch it on the way out and he said it was awesome. So thank you, Lalana, for posting that. Guys, if you're struggling with your covers, go and watch Lalana's video. Um, she just posted it in the uh, group, um, but it's on YouTube. So if you want to post the link here, Lalana, please do. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, Isaac and I actually have a backlog of videos because we've been rushing the templates out. We are going to be getting some videos up soon. We haven't done covers yet, so I'm really happy you did that. That's really, really cool. Um, but we have got a bunch of videos that we are either working on or editing and that we will be sharing soon. Um, I think what we're, what we're really trying to do is kind of like a mini course on YouTube or pretty much it's like a course basically um, but free on YouTube we're just pulling in um, videos on different aspects of create space and putting them into a playlist on YouTube so if you watch my create space playlist on YouTube 
Um, hopefully you will end up pretty much having had a course on create space. So, um, but yeah, go and watch Lalana's video because it's really, 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 really good. And Isaac doesn't give praise lightly. So, um, he, he was raving about it. So yay. Um, okay. Back to talking about books and niches and brainstorming. Um, oh yeah, you asked about, uh, marketing. Lalana said, what, what about, uh, what kind of marketing? And I think, um, Sonny, is, is kind of um, asking the same question. So she says, where do you write this information when you market your blank pages books? So this is where it's really good to sort of use social media and think a little bit outside the box. So with your book, you get a title, subtitle, description, author name, um, and keywords. And basically a lot of it comes down to keywords your title your subtitle um and your author name are all about keywords put your keywords in there um make them human readable don't spam um what i tend to do is do a very human friendly title and then my subtitle i kind of load up with keywords um and that's the way i do it so that when you put your title on the book it looks okay um you also have the description field. Now the description field doesn't serve any search purpose. It, none of the words in the description are indexed by Amazon. So they, they will not be searchable. However, your description is there to persuade people to buy the book. So definitely use the description to explain what people should do with your book. Um, that's really, really powerful. Now also, if you are doing other marketing, like for example, I suggested doing a YouTube video, um, you could do a Facebook group or page for your, uh, for your book um, and put videos on there, like, kind of like I'm doing now. That's where you can start explaining to people how to use this book. You can say, wow, have you seen my new yoga diary? This will solve your problems. And this is a key thing when I say, how are people going to use your book? It's really about like, what problems does your book solve for them? So it's like, can you remember all the names of the, the ladies at your yoga class? No, okay, well use this book, keep a track of all your yoga buddies. And you can use page two to write down all those difficult exercises that you struggled with. Um, Lalana says Instagram or Twitter. So what I do, I, I hate Twitter. Honestly, I, I really don't like using Twitter. I find it really dull. Um, so what I do, I have Twitter linked to my Facebook and to my YouTube and to my Instagram, I think. So when I, like, if you go and look at my Twitter, I never post anything directly to it. Um, it will be a weird day when I start just tweeting. Um, but I, what I do is I have them all linked to automatically post to Twitter. So for the people who are on Twitter, who do enjoy Twitter, they get updates with all my stuff, but I don't specifically spend any time on Twitter. I just have it automated. Um, so my, my Facebook page posts, my YouTube videos, and my Instagram posts just go directly to Twitter. Um, Instagram... I think Instagram is awesome. Like I will be totally honest. So um, my, with Instagram in my cultivate class, I don't know. I th I'm sure a few of you are in uh, the cultivate class um, and cultivate is my course for marketing and for just all kinds of um, marketing, like uh, putting together um, messenger bots, putting together a signature program, putting together like funnels with, um, with free lead magnets. All of that stuff is in cultivate but I do have a class in there on Instagram and Instagram is cool. Like I, I think it's really, really powerful. Um, you can build up a lot of followers. It is work though. And I don't really enjoy Instagram as a platform. So I find it work. Um, and I've kind of been meaning to outsource Instagram or thinking, maybe not meaning to, but thinking about outsourcing Instagram because I really don't enjoy it. Um, but it works. I think it is really good. I think it, um, I, I think it has a big reach. I think a lot of people look at Instagram, but I think it's very niche dependent. Um, Instagram works really, really well for 20 somethings, image conscious people, visual artistic people. Um, I think it doesn't work so well for older people. There's not many older people on Instagram. Um, 
I think teens love it. My teens are all over Instagram. Um, so I think it's a great platform, but you just, it's like, you can't do everything. So I say focus on the platforms that you understand, that you enjoy, um, and that don't feel like too much work. Like for me, it's Facebook. I, I, I think I'm nine, like Facebook and YouTube are really my channels. Um, but honestly, use everything. Um, use Amazon Spark. That's a really good one. Like Amazon Spark is on the Amazon platform. It's still new. There's not that many people on it, but you can get seen on there because it's still kind of untapped. Um, Pinterest as well. A lot of people uh, in our courses for Amazon um, have put their products on Pinterest and got a lot of interest from there as well. So don't forget Pinterest. And the cool thing is when you put this stuff on social media, that's where you can like explain anything about your book. You can say whatever you want. You can take your time. Um, I mean, I can pick up my book and I can say, well, okay, this is, this is my new yoga book. If you open it up on page one, you'll find, um, this is a great place where I like to keep all my contacts on page two. I like to keep a list of, um, things I want to work on or thoughts I had during yoga or my meditations. Like you can actually do that with a YouTube video. Um, Amazon spark. I know a couple of you asking about Amazon spark. Amazon Spark is an app. Let me see if I can bring it up on my phone, actually, because that's probably the best way to share it with you. Um, Amazon, okay. Um, all right, so I'm on the Amazon app on my iPhone. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to just show it away from the light. Um, but it's right here. It says Amazon Spark, and this is just the Amazon buyer app. It's not the seller app. And it's kind of basically Instagram. In fact, there's someone posting a book, um, but it's basically Instagram for Amazon and it's within Amazon's platform and it's on um, the phone. It's on your app. So um, that's Amazon Spark. It's like a little mini social media app within um, within. Oh, night mode. That's a good idea. I could do that. Um, but anyway, that, that's basically what it is, is a, a social media app that's within Amazon's platform and it's accessible from the Amazon buyer app, not the seller app, the buyer app. Um, so that's Amazon spark. Um, yeah, we, I think we did a walkthrough on it. I think in t-shirt revolutionary. So if you're in that class, um, there's a walkthrough that mentions Amazon spark in there. Um, so there's a lot of places that you can market your books. Oh yeah, Jan, I know you told me about your polls. I think you did, um, with your t-shirts, you did, which do you prefer this shirt or this shirt? And that would work really well for books as well. I hope you don't mind me sharing that. I, I hope I didn't say too much. Um, but yeah, you can use it to compare, um, different books and say, do you prefer this one or do you prefer this one? And then people engage when you ask them questions. Um, Cher says, should we name our Spark page the same as our Facebook page? Um, you know, I think you can only have one Spark account. So I, I guess you have to decide what you want to use it for and what you want to focus on with that. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, it's been a while actually since I've used it like that. I don't know if you can put a, a custom name on it. Um, but yeah, play, play with Amazon Spark. Um, Cool. Okay. So what I really wanted to talk about today, um, we'll get there eventually after two videos and, and 20 minutes. Um, by the way, thank you for the amazing response yesterday on the templates. I'm absolutely blown away and I'm so glad you're all um, using them and having fun with them. We have such a long list. Um, we, we, we love that you, you keep them coming and that you've kept the requests coming, the suggestions coming. Um, we still have a long list of things we want to do, not just styles, but also functionality. So we're really looking at ways to keep making the system more powerful and to keep it growing. So please guys, please, if you are enjoying the templates, please, please tell your friends, like share them, anything you can. Um, all word of mouth just keeps us focused, keeps us working on the system and keeps it growing and getting better and better. Um, so yay, the more templates for us all the better. Um, thank you guys. Okay, so um, I got this on my mail, um, through my mailbox on my doormat the other day from a lovely lady um, called Nelda Patterson. I think that's, that's her. And this is her marketing thing. She's a real estate agent and calendars are a great thing to do as a marketing thing. Like we're talking about marketing. Um, if you have a fan club, if you have an audience, if you have people who like your books, give them a calendar. And the reason calendars are great is because people put them on their notice boards, people put them on their desks, and it means that your brand is on their desk all year round and they're constantly reminded of you. Um, 
So I'm giving away one of my secrets here, but calendars are a great thing to do as a marketing thing. So Nelda knows this. She is a smart marketer um, and she has come up with a list of events in San Diego. And I thought this was just such a simple way to get niches because listen to these events. Okay. There's a mainly Mozart festival. Boom. Suddenly we could do like Mozart themed sheet music. That would be really, really cool. Um, maybe we could do like, so in t-shirt revolutionaries, I think Isaac did a thing where he was putting like mustaches on the Mona Lisa and sunglasses on, on things like, mess up Mozart you could have like a punk Mozart um sheet music book that would be really fun um but or you can do a lovely sort of tribute to Mozart like there's all kinds of different approaches to this but I thought that was cool Mozart um okay the county fair art um marathons the rock and roll marathon San Diego and you know what I like about the rock and roll marathon that's like an intersect so one of the things I say a lot is um that a, a real key to creativity is intersects oh and i was thinking about this yesterday now what oh there was a great story in the news so they said okay well it's not a great story they said a hundred thousand californians um didn't weren't able to vote yesterday um and then and so that's like okay fine that, that's that's a typical news story okay a hundred thousand californians couldn't vote and then they said oh the fonz couldn't vote so apparently like Henry Winkler was unable to vote. And then like suddenly that is like an amazing story. It stops being boring and it's like, whoa, whoa, Fonzie couldn't vote. And it's just that intersect of like the boringness of like politics and voting. I'm sorry if you're, uh, yeah. voting isn't boring. It's a civic duty, do vote. Um, but the boringness of voting and politics compared with like Fonzie, and that's like an intersect. And sometimes what I find is the weirder the intersect, the weirder the two things you can put together, the better the art or the effect or whatever it is that you are producing. Um, it's usually because there's like a small link between two things. But if you can find a weird link between two completely unconnected things, that's like the foundation of art right there. It's just finding those intersects. Um, so Fonzie not being able to vote, amazing intersect. Um, oh, like the rock and roll marathon, brilliant. Sports and music, great. Um, okay, so what, what else have we got in here? Okay, the United States Police and Fire Championship. Um, athletes representing law enforcement, firefighters, Corrections officers, probation, border protection, immigration and customs um, compete in Olympic style sports. That's another intersect right there, like athletics and law enforcement. Suddenly, and I, I know merchants, like people who are doing merch and T-shirts will kind of already have that sort of thought about sub-niching. A, a lot of the time it's called um, sub-niching to say, OK, I want to make shirts about law enforcement and I want to sub-niche it down to athletics. Like, this is really cool. And I'm just getting all of this from um, Nelda's uh, flyer that she put through the door. And we're only in the first column. We've only gone through the first column. Um, okay, there's Film Out San Diego LGBT Film Festival. Brilliant, okay. Um, LGBT movie lovers, another intersect. And I love this because everything's kind of already sub-niched down. They've already given you the intersects. Um, San Diego International Boat Show. And here's what's cool about this. They say, see website for schedule. So if you like that idea and you say, okay, I want to make um, a yachting log. And I know there's a lady in our groups, Robin, who is currently um, doing e-commerce and selling from a boat. She's sailing around the British Isles and Europe and all these places um, and doing e-commerce from a boat. If you think boats and doing maybe a yachting log or um, a, a sailing journal, and, and again, think about specific functions, like what is useful to log if you are going sailing? What do you need to know? Maybe supplies, um, maybe, I, I don't know, contacts, maybe in case of emergency, all of those things you can put, oh, oh itineraries, like all of that you could put in your sailing journal. And here's the thing. 90% of people who are going to make a sailing journal on Amazon um, and who are rushing them out. And this is the great thing. If people are just spamming Amazon with loads and loads of books and not really putting any thought into the description or into what goes in them, you have this massive advantage because you only have to do a little bit of work 
to beat that and to be much more attractive, much more interesting than that. Um, and so what you can do is like make your book for sailing for boats, but think about the purpose of it. Think about what problems your book and like really take a moment and don't just say, I don't know anything about sailing because we all have access to Google. We can go and look at Google and figure out what you need to know if you're sailing. So think about what people actually, what problems people actually have on a boat. What problems do they need to solve? Maybe they go to trade shows and they want to write down um, the people who they talk to uh, or, or the contacts they make at a boat show. I don't know what happens at a boat show, but I'm sure I could Google it and figure it out. Um, but you, you could totally come up with specifics for that book. Um, so moving on, the Greek festival, San Diego Greek festival. And it's funny because I saw a billboard for this the other day and I thought that's a great niche. There's a lot of Greek Orthodox churches, um, Greek food. Like you could totally do a Greek themed journal. A lot of um, Greek people and American Greek people in California, and I'm sure around the rest of the US. So another awesome uh, niche there. What else there? There's a wine festival. Wine tasting journals are huge. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, <laughs> Lalana, she, she loves the Greek food. Yeah, they, it's pretty awesome. Um, Okay, mud mud runs, Marine Corps mud runs. That's a good one. A mud run journal. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of those. The um, stay away from copyright, stay away from trademarks, but just generic mud journals for mud lovers because there's a lot of those mud runs around. That would be awesome. Intertribal powwow. Now this is an interesting one. Um, I I suggest having some strong cultural awareness if you're going to do like a powwow journal or or something like that. But that's another great niche right there. Um, and and by cultural awareness, maybe actually be part of a tribe, perhaps. Um, like I feel that's something that probably you want to do respectfully. Um, Okay, San Diego Festival of the Arts, uh, Surfing America. This is a good one, 2018. And what I love here, okay, so it says Surfing America, 2018 Surfing Championship. It actually gives you some specific um, terms for surfing. It says competition includes adaptive surfing, longboard surfing, SUP, I have no idea. What, oh, stand-up paddleboard and junior teams. That just gave me four sub niches right there. So adaptive surfing, I'm guessing that's for people with disabilities. Um, that's amazing. Like that's something pretty powerful there. And again, if you're doing t-shirts, um, I would take that one and maybe think about like, um, I don't know, I'm, you could have like from wheelchair to surfboard or something like I'm, I'm thinking of people um, who might do adaptive surfing, but I'm sure there's some opportunities there. Um, but those other niches, great, longboard and stand-up paddleboard. Because people who do these things, they tend to be obsessed about their sub-niche. So they feel very passionately about their sub-niche. And the great thing is, there's probably not that many books that cater to those. So if you put a few of those out, you might have a captive audience there. Um, okay, we've got Taste of La Mesa, Taste of Little Italy. That's a good one. Um, Italian food. And it, again, it gives you some great suggestions um, like live music and um, walk along the sidewalks, alfresco food. Great. Um, okay, International Beer Festival. That goes without saying. Um, and actually, I mean, things like these, like think about this. If you made a beer journal, and you took it to the beer festival and sold it there, I bet you'd be like one of very few people selling journals there. And you could probably corner the market. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it's like a thing. When I go to estate sales, I love buying books. I used to, I, I, I don't do it so much now because I've been working more on software with Isaac. But the last couple of years, I've done a lot of book selling from uh, estate sales. And the funny thing is, when you go into an estate sale first, there's often a lot of competition for the books. Everyone rushes to the books. They've all got the scanners out and they're trying to buy the books. I always have a secret thing that I tend to go and find a craft room. And often I found more books in the craft room on like knitting and um, origami or flower arranging. I found those books are often more valuable. And because everyone kind of rushes to the books and ignores the craft room, um, that's where my opportunity is. And sometimes with marketing, there is more opportunity in looking at the niche. Like everyone says, okay, I'm going to go to um, a trade show and sell uh, on journaling or stationery on books. And I'm going to go and sell my books at a journal show. 
like that's a terrible idea take your niche like and go to a beer festival and sell your beer journal and you'll probably be the only person selling journals there and everyone will buy from you um I'm not promising anything i can't like earnings disclaimer and all that but i i think it's an idea okay um wow we, we've, we've turned over california clam bake i know nothing about clam bakes I, I i don't really like clams um but that's a great one into in and it tells you what is involved in a clam bake it says a sunset backdrop so this could be describing a book cover here um a sunset backdrop live entertainment and interactive beach games guests wearing white attire will cozy up on communal tables and enjoy a shellfish feast um so i don't know you could do a clam bake book where you taste like that i i don't know where i'm going with this but um shellfish and you put <laughs> um and and you you i don't know you just say what you think of the clam bake so that's awesome uh san diego wooden boat festival that's an interesting one um that's see that's a niche i wouldn't have come up with on my own wooden boats okay um but here's the great thing if you know there's enough people to actually have a festival for this on a local scale there are probably um people everywhere who i don't know wooden boats it's a thing um the card okay i love this one there is a show oh my gosh this this is how crazy san diego is um an immersive pop-up experience wait for it devoted to California avocados with seven imaginative rooms of large-scale interactive art installations. That's amazing. I think Isaac used to design um, when he was working for agencies. I think he, he was one of the designers on Hass Avocado. I think that was one of his things. I, I hope I haven't break, broken some non-disclosure thing by saying that. Um, but it, uh, avocados, crazy. It's just a huge niche. Um, why not do an avocado recipe book? And by the way, guys, we have heard you about the recipe template. Several of you said, yes, we want a recipe template. So that is next on our list. We will do recipes. Um, and we actually have some ideas for what we can do with that. We, we want to do a bit of work on recipes. Um, so an avocado recipe book, though, awesome. Um, and people are just crazy about avocados. You know, I think actually with avocados, you could do a cute notebook and just put like, <clears throat> little cute avocados all over it like a, a, a just i think people would love that um kathy says what about a general day journal template i think we have that in if, if you look at the the journal uh template that that might be what you're asking for if you're thinking about like a planner with days on it that's something we're working on um if you have another idea or if i'm not making sense please, please send me a sketch or maybe a sample of what you would like to see um, just so we, we know we're on the same page. Because I found so often when I'm talking to people and they say, I want a planner or I want a journal, um, they're such generic terms. We all kind of have different sort of ideas of what they are. Um, but we are working on dated, dated planners for sure. Um, okay, what else have we got? We've got the Juneteenth. Is that a thing? I guess it says Cooper Family Foundation Juneteenth. I think that's a holiday. I vaguely remember hearing about that. It's June 16th. Um, so you might want to Google Juneteenth because I've forgotten what it's about, but that's apparently a thing. Um, Father's Day. We know about Father's Day. That's coming up. I think I've, if you look back in the group, if you search Father's Day in the group, I did make a couple of posts about Father's Day. So there's like a big brainstorming session on Father's Day in the group. Um, and there's another one, Father's Day concert, Make Music Day. That's a fun one. So every kind of musician, young and old, amateur and professional, pour into the streets, parks, plazas, and porches to share their music with friends, neighbors, and strangers. I love that. Okay, so here's something you, I, like, I've just, my brain is exploding with this make music idea. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, you could come up with your own kind of niche of music, like street music. You could call it street music and say, this is like a busker's. I don't know if you call them busking, buskers here. In the UK, we call them buskers. And they sit on the um, subway or the underground and play music and ask for money. Um, what about like a sheet music book for buskers to, or busking hits or street music hits. That would be a really fun thing. You could even take this a step further. Like this makes my brain think in a sort of magic formulas way. Um, what about if you came up with 
Okay, so you know like those little lending libraries, someone put up a library and then everyone like shares their books and they share uh, and, and they swap books. Maybe you could come up with, or, or you know, the, the, when you're in the line um, at uh, like coffee shops, some coffee shops have suspended coffee where you can pay for a coffee and then it's given to someone who's broke or homeless or whatever later on. Um, people come up with these kind of little movements. So like I, I, I think you could call them like a micro movement that does something good for society. What about if you did like a music book and you encourage people to share the music book or give the music book away. So you like write down a song and then tear it out or give the whole book away to someone else so they can add their own lyrics. Oh, that would be so cool. It'd be like a book jamming session. Whoa, this is, this is also, I just saw the like from Rick. I knew you'd like that, Rick. Um, what if you had like a little, like a jamming session in a book so that you could like post, um, you could create a book and you can call it like book jam. And then you write down your lyrics or your sheet music, and then you pass it on to another musician and they can be inspired by your book, by your, by your um, song or composition, and then they can add their own and then they can pass it on to a friend. And at the end of it, you have like this cool book full of sheet music um, that everyone could just sue each other over and say they wrote it first. It'll be amazing. Jam book, book jam. I think this is a movement that should happen. Um, but there's an idea. Um, don't to each other be everyone be cool um what does mary say she said <laughs> she says planners where you can fill the date in yourself would be great that way you can start a planner wherever you want to and aren't constrained to january december etc yeah that's that's a great idea just blank planners yeah we we are working we we've got some we've got a lot of ideas with planners so we are working on planners we are we are very much working on planners um god i w i wish there were more hours in the day guys we Isaac and I have got so many like things going on that we just we want to get them all out and we're, we're just prioritizing like okay what do we want to get out first what's most important because the response that we have had with create space and the results we're seeing like you guys are posting sales you're like you're doing really well with this so we want to we just we're really enjoying it and we really want to keep it going for you um, and find more ways to keep this like super profitable fun um, and productive okay we're almost there. What, what else have we got? We've got, oh, a chili cook-off. That's a good one. You could do chili recipes. Um, there's a, another beer festival. I love this one. On June 23rd, there is a fairy festival. You can create a fairy house, make fairy treasures, wear your fairy costume or come as you are. Same thing, same thing. Always um, in fairy costume. Um, <laughs> bring your camera for a picture with the fairy queen. So again, they've given us some sub-niches there. Fairy houses. That's pretty cool. So, okay, guys, what about, like, you could create, and again, we're going back to sort of magic formulas, creating a micro movement idea. What about, like, fairy houses? Like, make a sketchbook where you can draw fairy houses. Um, what about taking a real life thing, like tiny houses, and intersecting that with fairies? So you could have, like, um, I, I don't know, how would that work? If you had, if, if you had, um, like tiny houses, but you fairy theme them. You could do, oh, you could do like mythical tiny houses or like you could do this. This would make such a good sketchbook. I think that would be a great sketchbook to have a fairy house sketchbook. Um, sorry, Rick says <laughs> I'm making him frazzle brain. Um, yeah, that's, that's my life is like frazzle brain. It's like frizzy hair, frazzle brain. Oh my gosh, that should be on a t-shirt, shouldn't it? Frizzy hair, frazzled brain. Um, <laughs> okay. There's another music festival. Um, um, festival of yoga. Okay, so we just talked about yoga. And again, this is good. It gives us some sub niches. Guided yoga, meditations, music, um, and a vendor marketplace. So brilliant. You could write that. That just expanded my idea for a yoga book. So you could put in, um, you could write your own guided meditations. And you could also keep a list. So it has a vendor marketplace. You could include a list of contacts. You could include a list. And if you're making the book yourself and you're making the interior and you're designing an interior, um, you could include a list of contacts in the yoga business. Um, that like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You, you, you can, you can use trademarks in passing as long as you're not like confusing people that you are the trademark. If you want to put a list of businesses in your book, you can do that. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, 
San Diego Smooth Jazz Festival. Oh, that's that's awesome. I, I could ask my friend about that. My amazing friend Ellie, she's my um singing teacher and she is a jazz singer and she just she tells me all this amazing stuff about jazz, which I know nothing about because I'm like a rock chick. Um oh the, this flyer. So Amy, this is this is what we're talking about. Um I got this flyer on my doorstep from a lady called Nelda Patterson. There she is. I'm sorry. I'm sh- you know what? If you want a house in San Diego, call Nelda. I'm sure, like, there she is. Um, <laughs> I just realized I'm sharing her phone number, but I'm sure she doesn't mind. That's kind of the point of it. Um, but anyway, it just has a list of events that are happening in San Diego in June. And I'm just kind of mining it for, <laughs> yes, yeah, shout out to Nelda. We love you, Nelda. Um, I'm just going through the, these uh, these events that are happening in June and kind of mining it for niches. Uh, and we've, we've found a lot. So watch this back. Watch this back when we finish. Okay. Um, the last few, what have we got? Oceanside Independence Day Parade. <gasps> oh, it's Independence Day soon, isn't it? Um, come see the floats, the bands, the walking groups, the cool cars, and much more. So this is something cool. I mean, if you, we were talking uh, about Pride and Pride Week and the Pride Marches and how you could put together like an organizing journal for Pride organizers. Um, you could totally reskin that for different events. So you can make an organizing journal. You could do the 4th of July themed organizing journal for people who are organizing 4th of July events, parades, marches. Like they, they're all kind of the same thing. You just reskin them slightly. Um, so awesome. And then the last one is, this one's great. Um, switch foot bro am i like i have no idea what bro am is um but it says it has a surf contest live music and nerf surf jousting exposition so i don't know what nerf surf jousting is but that sounds like something to definitely look into that sounds like a new thing um so what did we talk about we talked about lots of things oh my gosh this has been um this was actually a two part video we started in another video and then facebook kind of messed me up or my children were streaming too much um so we we moved to a second video uh we've done we've done 40 minutes in this video so we're, i think we've done about 50 minutes of just brainstorming you guys have come up with some amazing amazing ideas we talked about Um, We talked a little bit about marketing and how to market your books. Um, I suggested that it's a good idea to spend a little bit of time on your books, like rather than just churning them out to spend a little bit of time sharing them, marketing them. The key thing, the key, key, key thing, if you take anything from today's um, chat, tell people what to do with the book, like just spell it out. The more detail, the less you make them work, and the more detail you can give them on what they're supposed to do with your book, uh, the more likely you are to get sales. People don't like to think. They don't like to use their imagination. You have to kind of um, prompt them, like send them down that path so that their imagination kicks in and they go, yes, I do need that book. That's the book I need. But you really have to spell it out. And what I've noticed is the more information there is in a blank book, the more, like, Moleskin know this, they're like one of the biggest um, notebook sellers in the US, and they are focusing more and more on prompted books, like really laying out what you need to do with your book. Um, So tell people what they're supposed to do with the book, give them as many ideas as you can. Um, We also talked about just niche mining, I'm gonna, that's my my new name for it, Um, mining niches, um, brainstorming niches, you like i know i know there's people who are doing like really expensive courses and classes and fancy software and all this stuff to mine for niches um you don't need to do that because here's the thing if you're and and what 99 percent of them are doing is just looking at their competitors or looking at what's already successful which is crazy because if you well it's not crazy but it's just like if you're just already looking at what's successful then you're you're missing out on this world of like you're you're just swimming in the red ocean with the sharks that have already eaten everything you want to go find those blue oceans i'm all about blue oceans of opportunity blue sky thinking um go find new niches if no one's done a clam bake book it doesn't mean that clam bakes are a terrible niche it means that no one's done it yet it's a blue ocean jump in um it's like i i really think the lesson here is well i hate saying that that sounds so wanky um but like if you can take anything from this, it's that you can find niches anywhere. 
You can literally just walk into, um, and, and the key is just thinking of everything as a suggestion or a prompt and, and just whatever you're doing, turn that into a prompt. So if you're walking around Walmart and I do this all the time, like if, if, if Isaac's gone to the optician or something and I'm just walking around Walmart, I will just walk around and go, Oh, that's a niche. That's interesting. Oh, okay. They're selling those now. And, and you can literally use anything to brainstorm niches. You can use any like list of information to brainstorm niches. Just think about intersects, think about sub niching. Um, and you will find a world of things like just let and trust yourself. Like here's the great thing with these books. They're free. They're free to make. If you've got the templates, you're already like way ahead. You've already got something that you can like just stick a cover on that template and you're done. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't cost you anything to try an idea like you don't need to like validate your idea. You don't need to say, okay, well, everything that I looked at in this niche is in this rank and has this, like, it doesn't matter. Just have faith in your own book because the people who I've seen be really, really successful with create space, had an idea, knew there was a target audience. And this is, this is what validates a book. Let me tell you the secret to validating a book. The secret to validating a book is knowing there is, there are people out there with a problem that your book solves. If your book solves someone's problem, you probably have a good book idea. So that's it, try your idea out. If you think you can solve someone's problem, don't worry about the competition. Don't worry about who else there is or the, whether there's like a failed book by someone else, doesn't matter, just solve their problem. Okay, um, Andrea, no, Create Space doesn't offer tab journals. Um, there's a couple of, I, I did post about stickers the other day. If you search in the group for stickers, um, one suggestion I had is that you could bundle stickers with your book and sell it as a new product on the Amazon marketplace. Um, so that's one idea. Uh, Jennifer, I like Jennifer, and that was the other idea we had, said roll into a car show and sell books, roll into a beer show and sell books, roll into a swimming show and sell books. You'll be the only person there selling books. But if your books are about that niche, you will get those sales. Um, so that's, yeah, that was another thing. Oh, and also we talked about creating a micro movement. So things like um, suspended coffees, that was a micro movement, like paying for a coffee and then someone else comes in later who can't afford coffee and they're given that coffee. That was like a micro movement based off the whole pay it forward thing. Um, the, the little lending libraries, micro movements. There is nothing to stop you from starting a micro movement. Um, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, say what you want to do and then sell a book that supports that micro movement and like that can go viral. That can be huge. Like that's when you're really, really marketing. Okay. I've talked long enough. It's been a long video. I hope you really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me and brainstorming with me. You guys are awesome. You came up with a ton of ideas. Um, okay. So it says, how would you do a bundle? Okay. So, um, let, let's, this is, this is, this is, oh my gosh, this is, this is like flashback Wednesday. Um, Amazon give you a lot of ways of um, selling a product and they have Amazon Marketplace. And I know a lot of people have come to create space via Amazon Marketplace, which is where you can just sell any product. Um, my suggestion is that what you do is set up your Amazon Marketplace account, buy um, like 10 of your books and they're cheap. I mean, your books are like $2.50 on if, if you order copies from create space, um, buy like 10 books. It'll cost you $25 to try this out. Um, go to stickermule.com and order some stickers from there. Stickermule.com, M-U-L-E. Um, and what you can do is package them together put them in either, you can use a white envelope, you could use a poly bag. Um, if you're, if you're like really want to think outside the box, you can get some really nice packaging. Um, I think there's bagsandbows.com. Like there's some really nice ones. There's packlane.com. There's a lot of great places to get packaging and package it together and then resell them on Amazon for like a, a higher price. Make sure you get a profit after the Amazon fees. But yeah, you can, you can recreate this as a new product on Amazon. So you can sell your Create Space book with something else as a new product on Amazon. Um, now, one quick word of warning. If you, a, a lot of people do bundles um, and sell bundles on Amazon. Um, a bundle is when you just sell two or three or more products together in a poly bag and just say, this is a collection of products. What I'm suggesting you do is not a bundle, um, but you actually 
package them as a new product that you can create a listing as a new product and the reason i say this is that amazon doesn't really like people bundling books and selling books together because they don't want people doing like this is harry potter um and a bag of popcorn because they people can go on forever with that so amazon don't like that but they they are okay like think about crayola packs okay like a crayola pack will have a coloring book and crayons already packaged together that is totally acceptable on Amazon. That's not a bundle. That is a packaged product. And you can do that with your books. You can package your books with crayons, with stickers, with tabs, um, with whatever, you, like envelopes, whatever is relevant to your book. Um, and you can sell that as a package as long as you put your brand on it and say, this is my branded product. So that's how you would do that. Okay, guys, have a good one. I know I've talked way too long. Um, I, it, it's always fun talking to you. I love this group. You are like the best. You like I love your creativity, guys. So keep rolling. Keep those books coming. Um, keep sharing your success. I love hearing the success stories. I love hearing um, your sales, what you're doing with Create Space. Um, if you're having problems, if you're struggling, post your questions as well. We're, we're all here for you. All right, and go watch Lalana's video also. Okay, guys, have a good one. Bye.